Here I have a 27 inch monitor and it's already tore apart because the CCFL bulbs were dying. And what was happening with this kind of typical stuff you sometimes see is it starts to get a pink hue in the picture. The whites kind of get a bit of a pink tint to it. And this one eventually, I believe, got to the point where it started shutting down. The inverter board was, was kicking off. So what I'm going to do with this monitor is I'm going to try out an eBay LED conversion kit. This kit runs about $13. I believe it was $12.99 shipped direct from China. It comes with two LED strips and then the uh, little power board. Uh, this also controls the dimming. Um, now, with I tried to get an idea on the power consumption on the old lamp, but uh, my tester died out on me while I was taking measurements. But with one lamp, it was pulling approximately 800 milliamps at 24 volts, so it's about 1920 watts per uh, per strip. So about 40 watts, approximately 40 watts of power consumption for both top and bottom lamps. That might not be very accurate because I wasn't using the inverter or the TV, the monitor had. I was using this little tester inverter that bit the dust on me. But anyways, both of these running on maximum brightness is only pulling about uh, a half an amp at 24 volts. So the power consumption on the LEDs together, the complete pair, is only about 12 watts. So that's nice, nice dip in power consumption and I expect it to be uh, probably even brighter than the original CCFL bulbs. So I'm gonna go ahead and install these strips inside of the original uh, little metal housings here. They will help uh, heat dissipation uh, for the LEDs on the metal strip and also kind of helps direct the light so you don't get bleed through on the top and bottom edges. So here the old lamps have been removed. The new LED strips are just super glued in place in the channel. Now when putting, when gluing that in, pay attention because the LCD sandwich has cutouts on one side for wires but no cutouts on the other side for the wires so you have to uh, Make sure you glue it down so that uh, the channels are facing the right direction with the wires coming out the right end to tuck inside this channel here. Here is the LED strips installed in the channels back in the uh, plastic sandwich uh, ready for the LCD to be put on top. Just a final test before it's finished up and it's looking good. And here it is with the LCD panel on. Now for the fun part, the wiring. So to start with, the board that comes with the LED kit, it has four main wires. It has the volts in, the actual supply power that it needs. It has the ground, and then it has the enable, and it has the dim. And all four of these connections need to be right for it to turn on. Uh, so the power input range is 10 to 30 volts, which is great. I mean, just about any TV slash monitor power board is going to have access to that. This particular board for this TV uh, has an 18 volt constant supply for the inverter driver circuit. Now, I did remove the transformer just so it's not wasting energy driving a coil that's no longer needed. Uh, so, and then with this board, with the dimming, signal <clears throat> maximum brightness is with the dimming signal grounded at a low state uh, floating or a high state it's at its lowest dim setting and then the enable uh, the enable has to be high to turn on uh, this particular TV has a 5 volt enable signal and then to tap in, let me see if I can get a closer view here. So the front side of the board here, you will see there's a couple of large electrolytic capacitors. These three caps are in parallel with each other. This is the main supply power to drive the uh, backlight circuit. This is the 18 volt constant. You can tap onto it from any one of these caps. I tapped onto it on this end here. Um, just right on the other end of the electrolytic cap. So there's my actual supply power that's going to use. 
And then if you look on the connector side where the connector comes in on these pins here, now there's the row of pins, the last three, um, the last three pins uh, go up to three jumpers on the top side, I'm sorry, top side of the board, there's three jumpers here. And this is a diagram of what they are. So the first jumper farthest out on the board is 3.3 volts. That we don't actually need for anything. The middle jumper, this is your dimming signal. Uh, now this is a case where this TV actually uses a reverse dimming signal. Uh, so for this TV, high is actually max brightness where this board that came with the LED kit wants ground to be max brightness. So 100% brightness is actually 100% dimness when you set it on the uh, on the actual screen for the menu settings. So, and then the last pin, the number three jumper furthest away from the edge of the board is the five volt enable signal. So that just goes to five volts anytime it's turned on. And that will be feeding the uh, the enable wire on the inverter board. Now since the dimming signal is reversed, um, when it's on zero dim, according to the menus on the screen, it's at maximum brightness, which actually isn't a low enough signal for the board to actually hit its maximum brightness. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it to a switch so that way in the back of the TV if somebody wants a maximum brightness they can click it over where the signal's just grounded. It goes to maximum brightness. If they want to use the on-screen menus, they can click the switch back over and it'll switch back in the actual pulse width signal uh, from the main board. Here it is with the boards mounted back in the case. On this end, this is for the LEDs. This is the LED driver just sticking out. This is not used. That's for the old CCFLs. And here is the switch. So in one position we're grounding the signal to the LED driver board for maximum brightness and in the other position we're going off of the uh, main board signal for dimming. LED wires are plenty long enough to reach. Gotta say I'm pretty pleased with this uh, direct from China eBay LED kit. Uh, there's no strange bleed through on the blacks. This is on maximum brightness right now. It's definitely nice and bright. This is switched over to the main board dimming signal, which is set to 50%, and this is maximum. Uh, the best part is, on full brightness, it's less than 22 watts. Less than 22 watts running, and then when I click it over on 50%, it goes down to about 15 watts of power consumption. That's for the whole set. That's pretty good. Um, yeah, must say, looks good, works good, I'm happy, thanks for watching.